Hello, IB Environmental students. We're going to be talking about energy, especially all energy coming from the sun and where it goes. And this is going to go into one particular objective. So if you're on a different part of this and you're like, what objective is this going under? It's all under 253. If you run out of space, just attach an extra sheet of paper. Let's get started with a review. So if you know this information, don't jot it down. Maybe just summarize, or you're welcome to jot it all down and pause, but I'm going to go fast since this is a review. So there's two laws of thermodynamics. Our first one is essentially this. Energy can be transferred and transformed, but it cannot be created or destroyed. If you don't remember what transfer and transform mean for our class, please review. But what's this talking about? It's referring to the fact that energy will flow in our environment, in the biological world called the Earth in one direction, unidirectionally. What does that mean? That means that we have the sun, sun, and the energy is going to come in, and it's going to go in one direction. It's not going to go back. It's not going to cycle back. We'll see that how that is in a second. Okay? And the reason why, just as a little hint, is going to be our friend entropy. The energy is going to get lost a lot as entropy, and the sun is continuously giving us more and more energy into our open system. Second law of thermodynamics that you're an expert of, I hope. Energy transformations will proceed spontaneously to convert matter from a more ordered, less stable form to a less ordered, more stable form. What does that mean? Well, it means our friend entropy, right? Entropy is heat or disorder, right? That's rather stable. And it happens spontaneously that when different creatures eat each other, right, they always will lose some energy to do work. And we know that's heat or entropy. 90% of the energy is lost. We call that the 10% rule. That is also related to why the sun is very, very awesome for us. We're so lucky and it continues to give us more and more energy because we're an open system. So that's a review. Hopefully you knew that stuff and I'm going to keep going. All right, let's learn about the Earth's energy budget. Big picture. So I would suggest you pause and I would suggest you kind of jot some stuff down here. And what I would hope you would jot down is not every single number, but the big idea, right? The big idea is we have flows here. A flow is usually shown as an arrow. And here the arrows are different widths. Notice that the widths are wider when we have bigger or smaller numbers. They're wider when we have bigger numbers, right? And so here we have 100%, that's the biggest width, okay? 64 is pretty big, it's a pretty big width arrow too. We see the inputs coming in as yellow, we see outputs going out as red in this diagram. So what we're seeing is energy can come in in a lot of ways and it, hap it does a lot of things when it comes in as sunlight, all right? Do we see a cycle though? No, we don't see a cycle, we see one direction unidirectionally, all right, energy keeps coming in and it moves around and it comes back out or gets lost as heat, which is also why this is red. All right, notice that there's land and oceans down here. A lot of this stuff in the middle is representing clouds or atmosphere. So do pause and kind of draft a visual for yourself in there in that notes area. All right, don't take up too much space. But I'm going to keep going and I'm going to summarize some of the key things you probably saw on this, okay? So the big idea, right, that sunlight came in right? We had a bunch of sunlight, 100% sunlight, right? And that sunlight then enters my system, okay? Now I'm in my system, and a lot of heat came out. This should be related to the fact that we're one direction, right? It does not loop back out, right? Um, and because of that, we continue to get more sunlight in. What kind of system are we? Are we stable or unstable? Because we keep getting sunlight in, even though we're losing some as heat. Are we okay? Yeah, we're okay, right? As long as the sun keeps doing its thing, we're stable equilibrium. We're pretty good, okay? Um, but that's why an open system is so important because we need that um, sunlight coming in, okay? Happens same for a closed system, but we, we also want this, the matter stuff as well. So we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more in the future. Let's keep talking about some examples that we could have seen in the visual. If you need to go back, go back. All right, so here's some example solar radiation pathways we should have gotten from our visual, but we might not have gotten them all. All right, one of the important things is sunlight comes in and it does a bunch of different things, okay? Um, and those arrows represented how much energy was doing the different things. Um, so a, a lot is lost by reflection, okay? So as the sunlight comes in, all right, a lot bounced back, 
off of um, not only ice caps and soil and water bodies, actually a lot bounce off directly off the clouds initially and off the atmosphere. But if it makes it past the clouds, it'll bounce off ice caps. It'll hit some soil and it bounces, all right? If soil's darker colored, it won't bounce that much and dark color soil absorbs a lot actually. Water bodies, we see them and we get actually sunburn sometimes if we go to the pool or the ocean because there's a lot of light bouncing off of the water. Okay, so lots lost by reflection. Some is absorbed, though. Okay, um, then if it makes it past um, those areas and it actually hits a plant, okay, picture a cute little plant, right? It has its little leaves out, okay, they do photosynthesis. Um, those guys are going to convert light energy to chemical energy. We call that photosynthesis. It's going to make glucose. Um, but amazingly, out of the 100% of the sun's light that's coming in, only less than 0.1% of all of that energy actually gets used by the plants across the whole world. All right, that means like 99 plus percent, 99.9 percent .9 is not even used by plants. All right, all of that stuff is happening in other ways. It's becoming heat. It's getting reflected. It's amazingly inefficient. It's amazing we survive. All right, um, and that little bit that enters the food chain because plants take it in, we also know that the food chain has rules due to the second law of thermodynamics. All right, chemical energy will decrease across the trophic levels by the 10% rule. A lot becomes heat through respiration. All right. Other energy that doesn't enter the food chain, some of it becomes heat, okay, as it gets absorbed by clouds or by soil or other things, right? A lot becomes heat. Other heat get, comes off of the food chain as well. Um, and some, it just bounces off and it re-radiates back into the atmosphere. So a lot of things are going to happen as uh, energy enters, um, but it's only in one direction, right? It's one direction in a food chain. It's one direction as it comes in and bounces around and out, okay? So um, I hope you notice some connections to what you previously learned in productivity. I'm going to go through this fast because these are terms that you saw in another set of notes, okay? So you don't have to jot them down. We're just reviewing. Um, you learned that there's something called gross primary productivity, which is the productivity of plants, um, GPP. It means how much photosynthesis is happening, how much light energy actually is being converted over to chemical energy like glucose by producers or autotrophs in a given time in a given area. So, uh, for instance, the rainforest or even a farmland is going to be way more productive than the desert right because there's a lot more photosynthesis happening for various reasons because there's water or people are trying to grow things all right but that's what this means it's just how much stuff is growing in the area but plants right that part's important and then you also learned about something called an NPP which is really confusing because they sound so much alike but they're related but different um, NPP, right, is net. Think about taxes, gross versus net. We'll practice in class. Um, the, um, this is the amount actually available for like a creature, like a caterpillar to eat the plant. So if it eats the plant, how much of the energy actually gets to the caterpillar? And we know that the 10% rule plays a huge role here because a lot of the energy is lost as cellular respiration or work also known as entropy, heat, all right? So we have to take that out of whatever we got from photosynthesis. So it's pretty much photosynthesis minus whatever work or heat losses, and that's how much the, the creature who's eating the plant will actually get. Cool, huh? So this is going to be related to the energy budget, right? Because it, it's about how much energy is moving about the ecosystem. And we would need to be able to show this in a diagram, and we're going to practice that in class in here. All right, so um, that's the simple productivity, actually. Um, what we haven't learned about is what about consumers, okay? What happens when it actually gets to the caterpillar? Um, we call that net secondary productivity, secondary meaning. Now we're at a consumer, actually, which is kind of confusing. Um, and what happens 
to the energy once it gets to a consumer. This is actually a rather good picture, so if you want to kind of draw the picture instead of writing, that's cool if you're more of an artist. But what you're seeing here is this caterpillar, okay, joules is energy. It got about 200 joules from a plant. What happens to that energy? Okay, well, actually, um, a lot is lost as um, work in cellular respiration, all okay? right? That's our R in our equation that we saw even previously okay we call that a loss and then some of the energy is actually assimilated or becomes part of the caterpillar which would mean that could get eaten so if a bird um, eats this caterpillar it only gets that assimilated 33 joules approximately okay give or take and then um uh, it's a creature unlike a plant plants don't poo um <laughs> and ib they call it feces or feces sometimes um an animal will actually have some losses due to waste. Um, so that will take some work and energy and a, a lot of loss that way. So this is just an interesting way to see how plants versus animals are losing energy for different reasons. And the biggest reason that's different here is the, the pooping, really. Um, and so if something eats this guy, we, we knew kind of through the 10% rule that approximately 10%, this is a little over 10% clearly, um, compared to 233. Um, but the big deal is energy is going in a lot of different directions, even when it's at this small scale compared to our big ecosystem scale picture. All right, a couple more things. Um, and then what if it's not just a regular caterpillar? What if it's a decomposer or a d eats dead things, okay? Um, or dead decomposing thing. That's what a detritivore it does. It eats detritus. Um, very similar, okay? Um, it's going to break down food that's not digested by other consumers. So it will also have losses due to, f f like, by pooping and feces, right? Picture like a little worm, it, it poos too, all right? And it also does respiration. So this, these guys are consumers. They're going to have the same exact thing. And we can see the, actually a whole food chain picture um, this way. Um, and so the really simple way to draw this is to show um, that energy is coming in, right? But then it, it goes out as heat. Or moves along so notice that the the red here is actually our energy and we see energy moving in one direction all right but the matter which is shown as bluish greenish I guess that will cycle so um, when we get to cycles for matter like carbon water you'll see some differences but the big thing you're seeing here hopefully as a big picture is that as energy moves through an ecosystem a lot is lost as heat entropy that's our big big idea if you're getting anything from this energy moves in one direction and it gets lost as heat okay um just a couple more things hopefully you capture these other big things we're going to be constructing and analyzing some examples of these in class but i hope you also caught on to this sometimes we will show different trophic levels as boxes okay show their biomass, and I hope you also saw that the energy flow is always being shown by arrows. So if you write anything from this, write the yellow stuff, okay? Last but definitely not least, um, really important idea here. All these diagrams are kind of different, but they have the same big idea. We can see our energy moving in one direction. This one's kind of overwhelming. It's one of the ones I might like to look at with you in class, but hopefully you notice that the arrows are different sizes. Um, and same with the boxes based on how big the amount of energy they're holding is. So bigger arrow, bigger amount of energy. All right, you made it. It was scary, I know. Um, but we'll practice in class. I'm really proud of you. This was a hard one. Okay? Bye.